Hello everyone, welcome to today's session where we are going to look at the poem The Solitary Reaper by William Wordsworth. The Solitary Reaper is one of the best known poems by this romantic poet William Wordsworth. It is a ballad but it was not uh, published in uh, the most famous collection lyrical ballads in 1798 which was co-authored with this poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge. This poem was actually uh, composed after 1798 that's why this poem appeared in 1807 in the collection poems in two volumes. It is said that this poem uh, was inspired by the poet's trip to Scotland in 1803 with his sister Dorothy Wordsworth. And if we see the structure and composition of the poem, then this poem is made up of four octaves. One octave uh, stands for eight lines. Uh, one octave is a stanza which has eight lines. So now let's begin the text. I'm reading out it to you. Behold her, single in the field. Yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself. Stop here or gently pass. So as I have told you that this poem was actually inspired by uh, the poet's visit or trip to Scotland. So we can say that uh, during his traveling in highland valleys the poet might come across uh, this uh, highlander solitary reaper girl as there is a her behold her so he might come across this uh, solitary reaper girl and after watching uh, whom the poet is addressing to uh, the passers-by or to the fellow travelers what is he uh, saying to his fellow travelers or passers-by or as we are reading this poem then it might it may be that he is addressing to the reader where he is saying behold her look at her is uh, so in the very first line uh, we have get uh, we have got this uh, idea or hint that the poet the speaker is addressing to the reader or to the passers-by what is he saying he is saying that look at her uh, look at the girl who is single in the field, who is alone in the field. Yawn. Yawn is an expression for over there. And uh, over there means, over there is an indication towards uh, something that uh, something, uh, indication towards the something which is at distance but within sight. But we can see it. So yawn is especially for that uh, particular thing which is within sight. So he is indicating towards the girl that yawn, it's there, she is there. Solitary, she is solitary highland lass. Lass means Scottish girl. So the girl who is alone in the field and uh, look at this, that Scottish girl who is alone in the field and who is reaping and singing by herself, who is harvesting the crops and singing on her own, singing by herself. And in this last fourth line, he is urging to the fellow travelers or to the other passers-by that you should stop and listen to her. And if you are not interested, interested, then kindly, gently pass, then walk on quietly without disturbing in her singing. So uh, he is saying, behold her, single in the field. Yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself, stop here or gently pass. Next, alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. Oh, listen, for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound. So here uh, in uh, as uh, this fifth line is getting started, it is getting started from this adjective alone. And uh, here we can say, or we can see very well that uh, by adding these adjectives and this kind of words which are emphasizing the what poet wants to do in by using these these words like single solitary by herself alone the poet is emphasizing on the solitude of this reaper girl that and that how uh, uh, solitude how solitary she is 
alone she cuts and binds the grain she is cutting and gathering the grain while singing a sad song melancholy strain while singing a sad song she is cutting and gathering the grain oh listen so here the poet is uh, urging again to the uh, travelers to the passers by or to the feeders that you should listen to this uh, to her uh, to the to the song of the solitary reaper with which the whole deep valley is overflowed it, the whole deep valley is full of her song you should listen this song so we can say that in this first stanza which is an octave the poet uh, has given a very straightforward description of the scene now let's move on to the next stanza where uh, uh, let's see what the poet says no nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady haunt among arabian sands so uh, here uh, the poet uh, is comparing poet compares the song of the solitary reaper to that of the singing of the nightingale bird who is uh, famous for her melodious voice uh, nightingale who is famous for its melodious voice so here uh, the poet or the speaker is saying that no nightingale ever sang more soothing or welcoming notes or music uh, she is singing to those weary tired groups of travelers weary bands tired groups of travelers who are rested who are taking rest or who took rest in some shady shelter in some shady place or oasis in the middle of the arabian desert arabian sands arabian desert so uh, in other words what the poet wants to say here that uh, even the even when nightingale sings uh, uh, in her melodious voice it it uh, uh, seems very soothing welcoming to the tired groups of uh, travelers who are um, very much tired and who are taking rest in shady shelter in the middle of the arabian desert but the song of the solitary reaper is sweeter is uh, uh, more sweet it is sweeter than that of the nightingale song so here is a comparison between the uh, song of the solitary reaper and the uh, notes or music or the singing of the nightingale next a voice so thrilling never was heard in spring time from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest hebri days so now the comparison shifts to another well known singing bird that is cuckoo so here the poet is saying that uh, in spring time the voice of the cuckoo breaks the silence of the seas and uh, it reaches to the far off hebrides islands of scotland which are situated in scotland it reaches up to there but the song of the solitary reaver, uh, reaper is even more thrilling more uh, exciting more thrilling than that of the cuckoo bird next will no one tell me what she sings perhaps the plenty of numbers flow for all the unhappy far off things and battles long ago so actually the poet uh, doesn't comprehend the meaning of the song or uh, the subject matter it is because uh, it mi it might happen because uh, the uh, this solitary reaper uh, probably this solitary reaper is singing in her native gaelic language of scotland so uh, being an english poet the poet the speaker um is unable to understand the lyrics the song the meaning of the uh, song so uh, he is uh, requesting to the fellow travelers that is there anyone who can uh, understand or who can throw some light 
on uh, what she sings will no one tell me what she sings is there anyone who can throw some light on the subject matter what she sings then uh, in the second line he guesses uh, he guesses that uh, maybe she is uh, singing her um, from her tone actually she guess he the the speaker guesses takes a guess from the tone of the song tone plaintive numbers from the tone which is a mournful uh, so the speaker takes a guess that maybe she is singing about uh, something uh, related to old unhappy far off things or the old tragedies and battle long ago and maybe she is singing about the ancient battles uh, happened long long ago or is it some more humble familiar matter of today some natural sorrow loss or pain that has been and may be again so now uh, the poet is uh, guessing again the poet uh, is guessing that uh, the song might be about humble might the it earlier he has uh, guessed that it might be because the tone is very uh, plaintive very mournful so he find he found it mournful that's why he said that it may be related to some ancient battles or old tragedies but now he is guessing again that maybe the song might be about something humbler or something about more usual happenings uh, like some natural sorrow loss or pain that uh, every man everybody has to endure natural sorrow loss or pain that everybody and yours it might be about something like this or it might be about some familiar matter of today some domestic day to day incident which has occurred that has been which has occurred and may be again and may uh, may happen again some domestic day to day incident it might the song might be about that which ha- that incident about some related to domesticity which has occurred and it might happen again next whatever the theme the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending so here the poet is asserting the speaker is asserting that whatever the theme of the poem is whatever the subject of the whatever she is singing about one thing is sure that the song of this young women will never come to an end it seems to the speaker that the song of this maiden this young women uh, will never come to an end it will it is never uh, come to any stop as if her song could have no ending i saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending and here the poet is asserting again that i i saw this solitary reaper who was singing while working uh when and wh- how what was her posture during the work she was bending over to uh, cut the crop to harvest the crop she was bending over with and she was harvesting the crop with the sickle i listened motionless and still and as i mounted up the hill the music in my heart i bore long after it was heard no more so i listened so here the poet is saying that uh, when she was when he was uh, passing uh, in highland valleys during his visit he listened he happened to listen the song of the solitary reaper and he was so charmed by her song that he remain he remained motionless he didn't move he stopped there and he stood still in order to listen her song and as i mounted up the hill and later when he climbed up the hill when he moved far away from the place where the solitary reaper was harvesting the crop then uh, as he climbed up the hill uh, so during the distance the song could be heard no more now long after it was heard no more but the poet is saying the speaker is saying but even after passing Uh, uh distance of a uh, uh, substantial distance i could uh, i could hear the echo of the music which my heart has uh 
taken my heart i the melody of the song of the solitary reaper which the heart of the speaker has taken upon it the music is still echoing in his heart the music in my heart i bore so this was the poem solitary reaper in which uh, we can say that uh, the poet wordsworth seems to suggest the ability of art or music to transcend the cultural boundaries and even language itself as uh, uh, with the reference with a special reference of this poem we can state now that uh, uh, music with music we can communicate feelings or emotions even uh, if uh, the um, uh, e even if there is the absence of concrete understanding even the, as uh, the poet uh, yeah, we can see the poet he has not understood he has not comprehend the properly the song the lyrics of the solitary reaper but still he could uh, even after passing so much time and after uh, sitting at the far off place as while he when he was writing this poem he was not at the same place where the solitary reaper was and uh, the time also uh, passed a long time was also passed but then to the echo of the music of of the song of the solitary reaper was still intact was still echoing in the heart of the poet or the speaker and giving him a long lasting uh, a very deep impression or long lasting pleasure to the poet's heart and in this way this uh, music this uh, song of the solitary reaper left an indelible imprint or impression on the mind of the poet or the speaker and uh, if we talk about the composition or the structure of this poem then uh, as i have told that this poem consists of four octaves where one octave stands for eight lines and uh, the rhyme scheme of the poem is a b a b c c d d and uh, the rhythmic pattern in which this poem is composed is iambic tetrameter now let's have a quick look on the figure of speech employed by wordsworth in this uh, poem and in the very first line we can find apostrophe in this poem apostrophe is a figure of speech in which a speaker directly addresses someone it can be anyone someone so in this first line when the speaker says behold her this is the use of ap apostrophe in this poem and then there is metaphor and metaphor or symbolic comparison and we can we have seen in one of the stanzas of this poem the song of the solitary reaper was compared to the song of the nightingale and cuckoo which was uh, an example of metaphor or symbolic comparison and then this is the list of uh, uh, some more figures of speech or technical devices which have been employed by wordsworth in some of the po lines of this poem alliteration assonance consonance and enjambment and up to now i hope that uh, you can very well identify these figures of speech uh, as we always discuss uh, usually we discuss these figures of speech in detail in uh, most of the lectures so up to now i can hope that you can identify these uh, technical devices in uh, in the lines in the specific lines where these have been employed so with this hope i wrap up today's lecture now thank you for your attention